Beggars can't be choosers, but beggars never quit. Height here, and you already know what this is. It's time for choosing beggars, but with a twist. A blast from the past with Walk Back Wednesday. Let's do it. Our first one is from Dark Star Man. I am livid. Blank has been babysitting for me for seven months now. A hundred dollars a week. The hours are easy, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., like a regular fucking job, and the kids are basically angels. They sleep most of the day anyway at this age. I get a text from her saying she's applying to Walmart and that she can't afford to work for me anymore? She's not paying me anything. I'm paying her. What do you mean afford? Have fun working longer hours for less pay, you ungrateful bitch. And now I'm stuck without childcare. All the daycares in my area are super expensive, and every time I have posted an ad on a local buy and sell, people have left really mean comments. I'm getting desperate. I can't believe she'd put me in this spot. This is risking my livelihood. I thought she was my friend. You can't expect somebody to live on $400 a month, and maybe because they are your friend, that's why they did it as long as they did. This next one is by Apostasy93. Will you take 400? Sorry, but no. They're $1,000 brand new, and I'm asking 700 for a lightly used one in near mint condition. I'm open to offers, but 400 is too low. I could do 500 max, please. I need it for Christmas for my son. Sorry, I can't give it up for that. I'll drop it down to 600 for Christmas, but I absolutely cannot go any lower. So you're not even willing to help someone out during the holidays? I literally just took $100 off my asking price. Fuck you. Never mind. Clearly they didn't need it that bad for their son, otherwise they would have paid the $100 less than asking price. This next one is by Demanator. Break jobs, $100. 100 high a price because that $100 needs to include the pads and the rotors. It is literally impossible to make any money whatsoever to include the pads and rotors in the $100. Okay, I am in poverty, and I thought that you will show compassion to the meek and the poor. I apologize, but the pads and rotors themselves go for at the very least 150. I'm offering considerably lower prices than other shops would ever. Sorry, but I can't afford it. Jesus would have showed compassion. Showing compassion has nothing to do with requesting and receiving a service. If you're going to be receiving a service, you need to expect to pay for that. This next one is from Merked as Vain. Shut the fuck up is always funny if you deliver it one word at a time and you accentuate it by resting your chin on the palm of your hand, elbow on a smushed up pillow. Whoever reenacts this perfectly, I will Venmo you a hundred bucks. Hashtag, who will win comedy? A hundred dollars. Times are tough for everyone, I guess. I mean, he doesn't have to give anyone a hundred bucks, but for whoever reenacts that perfectly, he will. This next one is from Geek Studio. Hi, my baby just died, and I'm in some real need of comfort right now. I was wondering if you guys would be willing to send me a sample to try. I could do a review on Facebook or Instagram for you, or a box. I'm sorry for your loss, but I don't think anybody's going to send you a sample to try to try to comfort you, nor is it their job to. This next one is by Gravy Cap'n. I am raising a granddaughter who has been bringing home a backpack buddy each Friday. For us, this is not even beneficial. The same foods are sent every week. One can of high top chicken, which she does not eat. One six pack of raisins, which she does not eat. One snack pack pudding in chalk to vanilla, which she does not eat. One can high top fruit cocktail, which she does not eat. One can beef or chicken soup, which she does not eat. One can of high top beef ravioli or spaghetti, and she might try the ravioli sometime. One box macaroni, which she might eat sometime. 
I don't understand why the exact same foods are sent all the time and why there is absolutely no variety in these food bags. Why no beanie weenies, no chili, beef stew, jello gelatin, canned pears, peaches, apples, mandarin oranges, pineapple, no tuna, dried apricots, banana chips, applesauce or pear or other fruit sauces, no fortified juices, no oatmeal, grits, no peanut butter eye, salsa and tortilla chips. In short, why no real variety to help encourage consumption of the food? We are going to opt out of this program for lack of real benefit to our household. I'm sure it has its place, but it just seems weird that the exact same foods are provided each week with no variety. As a grandparent on a fixed income, I could use the help, but the way this program operates on such a strict regime of products makes it useless for us. I'm sure this is true for other households also. They provide what they can provide, and most likely, they can provide what they can get en masse either through donations or for cheap in bulk. Unfortunately, you're not satisfied, and you no longer have to be getting the food boxes any longer. This next one is by Drummer Deber. Comes with a CD player. Does it say anything in the description about a CD player? How else am I going to listen to it? Go out and buy one. So the five CDs don't come with one? I don't know, beggar. Did it say in the description if it came with the CD player? If not, then it clearly doesn't. Besides, you can pick up a cheap CD player anyway, so it's not a big deal. And our final one is by Self-Isolation Psycho. I didn't want to put this out here, but I have no choice. Blank brought me some beautiful gifts for baby Benjamin when he was born. A soft fleece blanket, cuddly elephant, booties, some clothes, and a singing toy. I didn't ask for these things. As I said, they were gifts. Well, as you all know, I lost Benjamin at 29 weeks. I gave birth to him, but he did not survive. A week later, Blank messages me asking if Benjamin used or touched the things she bought because if not, she wanted them back. I wrapped him in the beautiful blanket she got him and he was buried with it too. She wasn't happy about this and asked for the £7 she'd spent on it back as well as the other gifts that could go to another one of her friend's babies. Hey hun, just wondering if you used the bits and bobs I got for the baby. If not, I can give them to Laura's little one. Hope you're okay and resting up, hun. XX. Huh? XX. Let me know, hun, before I buy more stuff. Save a bit of money before Xmas, you know how it is. <laughs> Red, I'm not doing okay. I'm heartbroken. I can't believe you're asking me at the moment, but yes, I still have the things except for the blanket. He will be buried with it because it is warm and I thought it was stunning. I mean, I hope that's okay for you. Ah, uh, hun, sorry. I know it's a tough time. I'm sorry. I just needed to know before I spend any more. Is there a chance you have another blankie for him, babe? Like you said, it's nice and warm and Laura's baby can have use of that then, really if you get me. Heartbreaking, isn't it, hun? Let me know if you need anything. I'm here all the time. I've been having a tough time myself lately, so I'm here online and on my phone all the time for you. If you need to chat, let me know. Though about the blankie quick, hugs to you all, babe. Babe, can you let me know? I know you're busy, but so am I, and I need to know before I spend more money on Laura's baby and the kids for Xmas. See, hun? Huh? Well, we're waiting. <laughs> Wrong pick. I'm sorry, hun. What if I popped around tomorrow? I can pick it up then night, babe. No, don't come here, please. The blanket is with Benjamin. You can have the rest. I'll drop them off at yours. Don't even think of coming here. My husband is fuming with these messages that you're sending me a week after I lose my baby. They're packed in a bag. I'll leave them at yours. The blanket is with Benjamin. He is having use out of it. Thank you very much. 
Excuse me. I've been patient with you. I needed a note because I need to save money. I don't see why you had to use the blankets. That's seven you owe me. It was ten, but I'll let the other three go, seeing as you've been unwell and had bad news. I'm in all day tomorrow, so yes, bring them to me as well as the seven pounds, please. I'm lying in bed thinking of your replies. How rude you been. I didn't have to give you and your baby anything. Er, I thought you'd understand. With money and Xmas coming up, I'm devastated to be honest for you. And I'm devastated you're taking it out on me. I'll see you tomorrow. We can catch up with a cuppa and make amends. I can't leave our friendship like this. Babe, no hard feelings. I'll be in from 10 a.m. onward. I gotta go post office after dropping the kids off. Then you can come up with the bits and bobs in 10 pound. Are you coming then? I waited in for you and you haven't come and I need my things and my money. Thief! I think if they said they were going to drop off the things, they'll drop off the things when it's good for them. And also good for you. You trying to demand it happens in your time isn't how it works. And then calling them a thief? You gifted the things to them in the first place. They don't have to give them back. Alright. That's enough beggars for the day. Well, that wraps up this episode of Choosing Beggars. If you liked the video, please drop a like, share my content on all of your social media, subscribe if you haven't already, and make sure to hit that bell and drop a comment down below. Thanks for watching. Thanks to my patrons. Have a great day and stay safe out there.